God is a good God and he's got good things for you. He's got blessings, healings. Yeah, we all go through something, but God's got this for you today. This is Hope Today. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Anna Schmidt. Anna, we have an important guest, an important conversation today. Yes, I'm so excited for this conversation today. We are going to be talking about sex. And we believe it's important for Christians to talk about sex because, as you're well aware, the world is talking about it. So though it may make some uncomfortable, it's important to talk about something that impacts every one of our lives. Our guest today, Dr. Carol Tanksley, says, we all have a sexual story. In just a few minutes, she'll open a godly conversation into what to do with both the good and the not so good parts of our sexual histories. Also, just want to make a quick mention that this conversation may go into like a PG-13 nature. So just be advised of young ears in the room. Well, yeah, who's, who's worried about this? <laughs> <laughs> You no, like it's, sweat breaking out on your no, forehead, no, it's, Tom. It's an important conversation. Like you say, the world is talking about sex. The church needs to talk about sex yeah. and, and should. And uh, so you're going to learn how you can pursue and achieve a sexual wholeness on this program. You're going to find out where a sexual conversations belong in the church. Also, coming later, you're going to learn about a special worship and prayer gathering during this Thursday's National Day of Prayer. So you're going to want to stay. We have a special guest uh, about that as well. So, uh, uh, you know, and and by the way, this is our first day of our new schedule. We are on at 3.30 in the afternoon and 8 o'clock at night and 1 o'clock in the morning. So if you uh, are finding us here for the first time, welcome. We're glad to have you on board as a viewer. Yeah, Anna. good things happen here on Hope Today because we know that God has healing and freedom that is ready for us. And so, um, yeah, let's just get right into our conversation with Dr. Carol. Uh, her, her name is Dr. Carol Tanksley. She says that everyone has a sexual story, whether it's someone's past is messy or not. She's an OBGYN, as well as an ordained minister and a relationship coach. Her new book is called Sexpectations, Reframing Your Good and Not So Good Stories About God, Love, and Relationships. She joins us now for a candid conversation about sex and wholeness. So Dr. Carol, welcome to Hope Today. I am thrilled to be here, Tom and Anna. This is a important topic. Yeah, it can stir up a lot of feelings, whether this feels good or not so good, but we do need to be talking about it. And what I am thrilled to help people understand is that this is far beyond just behaviors, far beyond the things that we do with our bodies, although that is super, super important. And we need to understand the, the results of our behaviors, but to get one level deeper and get to the matters of the heart, which is where Jesus does his best work. Yes, he sure does. And you start off in your book by saying that we all have a sexual story and many, if not all of us, have some kind of harm in that area from the past. Can you unpack that for us? Yeah. If you think about what sex has meant to you, sexuality, it's much more than the certain experiences you've had, although that is really important. It also includes what you came to understand. Relationships were all about what is intimacy? How do intimacy and sex relate to each other or, or not? What is the emotional content of sex and God? I sometimes ask people as we start some of these conversations, put God and sex in the same sentence. What would the emotional tone of that sentence be? That will tell a lot about your internal picture of God. Uh, as we get to some of these things, uh, everybody that I have talked to has some kind of harm or negative part of their story, whether it was something that you know happened to you, but also all of us end up responding in ways that are less than whole. And so how did the things you came to believe and understand and know about people, about relationships, about intimacy, about God, and yes, the, the sex part of that, how did all that get embedded in your soul in not only the facts that you know, but the emotional and heart parts of what you believe and feel about all these areas? Because we are whole people. Bodies, minds, and souls all integrated. God made us 
that way and the whole sexuality and intimacy part of us speaks to all those dimensions of who we are. Can you talk a little bit about how God views sex? You know, it was interesting because I thought, like I've learned from the time I was real young, I feel like my, my mom did a great job sharing about it with me that God created sex, it's beautiful, it's supposed to be just a wonderful experience. And, uh, but many have not been brought up that way. And so can you share a little bit how God looks at it? Yes. I like to go back to the very beginning. I like to think about what we know about God himself. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, eternally coexistent together, so united, so one that we are told to think of them as one God, and he is. We could say that God within himself, within the Godhead, demonstrates and experiences ultimate, into infinite, intimacy. And when God created human beings in his image, he could not create us humans in his image without creating within us the need, the desire, and the capacity for intimacy. Now, uh, often when we think of intimacy and sex, th those two things get conflated. But the original design of how God created us as sexual beings was an earthly demonstration of that intimate, intimate, infinite intimacy that he experiences within himself and that he desires with us. One of the very first things that evil did when evil came into the world, human beings started to hide. We lost intimacy with ourselves, with each other, and with God. So that intimacy gone wrong was one of the, frankly, I believe, the core of what the very first thing evil did on this earth. And so the whole sexuality part, evil has, has messed up and brought untold, untold harm, but that is just a physical part of the intimacy that God designed all of us to experience, regardless of gender, regardless of relationship status. I spent many, many years as a single woman before I got married in my 40s. Now, since my husband has passed away, I'm a single woman again, but I am still a sexual being. Before, during my healthy, God-honoring marriage, and now as a single woman again. So it, it's not, again, only the behaviors that I do with my body, although as a single woman, of course, sex is not a appropriate, but what about the other parts of my need for intimacy, my need to be seen and known? And then I talk with so many married people, whether or not sex is happening in marriage, there's little or no intimacy. Those things have gotten so disrupted. But God designed sex as both a demonstration of intimacy that he experiences and then as a way for us to experience that in a physical reality for those who are married. It, it's just so complicated and so beautiful. Dr. Carroll, uh, I wanted to ask you about so so much of this topic talks about sexual. I mean, it seems to me that we we talk a lot about sexual sin or sexual misconduct of some yeah. sort in our lives, and we all know that God offers forgiveness. But you say that forgiveness may not always, you know, just being forgiven may not be enough. Where where else do we need to go? Yeah, forgiveness. Hallelujah! Thank God that we are all forgiven. Forgiveness deals with the past, and we all need that, both for the behaviors that we may or may not have done, and also forgiveness for just the way our very being has become, if I could say, infected by sin. But I would not want to be the same person I was when Jesus found me. All the things that have been even built into my very soul um, have to be changed. And if all I do is just receive forgiveness for acts that I have done, that sh stops short of the transformation that God has for us, that Jesus came to give. That journey to become whole is much more than only forgiveness. That, I use the word transformation for that. Transformation is available to anybody, regardless of the, the behaviors that, that I've done or not done that the very wholeness in my soul is, is a process. I have to, for example, not only just be, be forgiven for acts, but 
lose the shame. That takes more than forgiveness to lose the shame. All those parts of me have to come into the light. I think of Paul, um, he persecuted Christians, uh, sent them to their death, caused them to blaspheme, things that he talks about freely in his letters. Paul was forgiven for those behaviors, but he also achieved a level of wholeness and transformation that was much more than forgiveness. Part of what has to happen in our sexual story, in our process of transformation, is like Paul. Our past loses its sting. Uh, and that, it, that's, a, that's a healing, uh, more than just forgiveness only. Uh, when our past loses its sting, we don't wallow in the past, but it's not something we hide from either. Just like Paul could freely talk about his bad behaviors in the past, that's available to us. So the very places where we have been harmed uh, lose their sting and can become food by then which others are fed. God can use the very stuff in us as, as nourishment for others. Another thing that has to happen in our process of transformation is we become capable of intimacy. That need to be seen and known, I, I really believe that that is a better way to describe intimacy, to, to see and know and be known and be seen. We all hunger for that. And if I am to become capable of that kind of intimacy with others and, and with God, um, I have to find enough freedom and wholeness so that I can offer myself to another person and to God. We put walls around us that may be invisible when either we have experienced harm or we've done things sexually or in that whole arena. We put up walls that keep us away from others and from God. So those walls have to come down. I have agency about that. That's part of what the healing and transformation process means, that I get to choose when and how to take those walls down so that I'm no longer hiding in the bushes trying to cover myself with fig leaves, as Adam and Eve did. But I become capable of true openness and wholeness between a few other human beings, between my spouse if I'm married, and between me and God. So if somebody is watching today, I'm just thinking of different audiences, different situations that our audience is facing. So let's talk first about the person who is single and maybe they're facing a long season of singleness, years, it could be decades. We know that God has made them a sexual person and if they're finding that to be such a struggle and how they honor God, but they're having this struggle like, you know, is saying no, like just try harder. What are, what are they supposed to do? Trying harder doesn't work. Uh, I, I've discovered that, and I think any of our uh, viewers will as well. Our need for intimacy can be displayed and can be satisfied in many different ways. Witness Jesus. Jesus was here on earth as a single uh, human person with all the sex drive and sex hormones that any other human being has. How did he do it? Number one, he was in moment to moment, 24-7, intimacy with his heavenly father. That was the air Jesus breathed. We will not make it any other way. We need that too. And there is a sense in which intimacy with his heavenly father was not enough, air quotes, for Jesus either. He needed humans. He sought and pursued authentic relationship with a few other humans. We need the same. Jesus didn't do that with the crowd. He had Peter, James, and John. So, especially for the unmarried people like myself, who is your Peter, James, and John? That is hard for many people to pursue that kind of authentic intimacy with a few other humans. It's messy. You, you very well may get wounded. Jesus did. But it was so important for Jesus that he pursued it anyway. We need to do the same. All right, and then speaking into the, the heart of the person who is married and they're just, they want to enjoy it, but there's a lot of obstacles and they maybe dread it or they just, it's yeah. just not working right. What, how would you encourage them? Yeah, I think of intimacy rather than sex or first before sex. If you are a spouse, man or woman, 
who wants more sex, that is a good desire. But pay attention to the, the roots, the emotional content underneath that desire. For almost everyone, that is a desire to connect with your spouse, to feel validated and seen and whole. So don't start, if you want more sex, don't start with just asking for more sex. Start with connecting with your spouse's heart. This is more common in men than, than in women who, who want more sex. There, there are wives who do also. But I, I tell husbands, touch your wife's heart before touching her body. Seek her rather than her body. Then if you are the one who shies away from sex, maybe because of harm, maybe because you felt objectified, maybe because of things either in the relationship currently or prior to, uh, to your marriage, do the heart work so that you can find healing and then make the choice to reach out and connect. That may or may not mean sex today, but make the choice to take a mental step towards your spouse. There are many individuals, both men and women, who we call sexually responsive. You may not be thinking about sex all the time, but if you make a mental step towards your spouse, your body is more likely to follow. And then one additional recommendation for everyone who's married, talk about sex. That can feel awkward to many people because most couples don't. But there is great research to say if you talk about it, it's going to be more meaningful and it's very likely to happen more. Talk about what the meaning of sex is for both of you. What arouses you? What turns you off? What would you like to be different? Those kinds of conversations can help the intimacy between you, body, mind, and soul. Oh gosh, I appreciate that so much what you shared. So in this final minute that we have, can you direct people to, to resources? Of course, your book it was called Sex Expectations, Reframing Your Good and Not So Good Stories About God, Love and Relationships. And there's help online or counselors. Can you direct that, please? Mm, thank you. We have a site, YourSexpectations.com. Be sure to put the your there, YourSexpectations.com. We have a lot of free resources. You can use the contact page to reach out to me personally, of course, about the book. And we are developing some online communities there as well. And if you need some help, I do want to encourage you. It is worthy of getting some help. If it's with me or our resources, great. But if not, just get help somewhere. Talk to Jesus. Talk to somebody. You need to connect with others about this very important part of your life. Yes, healing and freedom is possible in Christ. So Dr. Carol, thank you so much for just sharing your experience and all the good information that's here. We appreciate your time so much. Oh, it's been wonderful, Tom and Anna, to be with you. Great to have Dr. Carroll with us. Well, stay tuned. In just 60 seconds, we will learn how we can all play an active role in the National Day of Prayer. Stay with us. God is calling you to do something significant in the earth for Him, regardless of your age, skill set, or perceived limitations. What's holding you back? When you give to support Cornerstone Television this month, let us bless you with Rick Renner's life-transforming book, Chosen by God. Every page will help you overcome your limited thinking and follow God's plan for your life. Rest assured, God has a plan, and He will thoroughly prepare you to fulfill it if you'll say yes with all your heart. This book will thrill you with the possibilities that await because you are chosen by God. Request your copy when you give by calling 888-665-4483 or donate online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for helping us spread the gospel through life-changing programming like Rick Renner, Hope Today, Hard Questions, and more. To keep your favorite programs coming and receive Chosen by God, donate today. 
Well, the first Thursday in May is always the National Day of Prayer. And this year there is a uh, observation, celebration of that in Monroeville. And I'm with Jim Caputz. He's the pastor of New Life Fellowship of Pittsburgh, but also he is the coordinator, the chief cook and bottle washer of uh, <laughs> the National Day of Prayer in Monroeville. So welcome, Jim. Welcome, welcome. I guess I, you should be saying welcome to me. <laughs> yeah, you did right. say welcome to me. Boy, I'm like lost uh, on this uh, that's one. That's all right. So tell me about the, the National Day of Prayer in Monroeville. Uh, what are you expecting to ha happen that, that day? So the National Day of Prayer has been going on for uh, over 70 years. Um, and actually before that, uh, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, both initiated National Days of Prayer. Harry Truman, I think it was around 1952, made it a yearly event. And then in the 1980s, uh, Ronald Reagan made it the first Thursday in May, which is all very good because, because our nation obviously needs prayer. And, um, you know, I was thinking about it the other day. The National Day of Prayer, if, if we just list the topics, uh, some people may not be all that interested. And it's come to my attention that really we are praying about the things that are important to you. Like what's important to you? Is your family important? Well, we pray about that. If you're a business owner, is that important? We pray about businesses. Do, do the things that our government does or doesn't do, are they important to you? Absolutely. These are things that we pray for. Our kids, uh, their education, the things that we're watching on the televisions, these are all things that affect all of our lives every single day. And uh, because of that, God has called us to pray, not to beg him to intercede, but to agree with what he already says he wants to do which is to uh, have our nation guided by godly men and godly women, to have our families uh, surrounded by other families that are healthy and well, uh, to have our children raised in, in godly fear. Uh, these are all things that we're praying for uh, all across the nation. I have, uh, I have a friend in Wisconsin uh, where we pastored, and he is heading up his National Day of Prayer event there. And over the weekend, we were in Lancaster, and we saw signs for the National Day of Prayer event happening right. there as well. So it's all about praying for what is important, the things that are important to us. And it's great for Christians, and I guess anybody's invited, right, to Monroeville. Tell me where it is and what time again. So the National Day of Prayer event is at the Monroeville Community Park. It begins at 6 o'clock with a time of uh, praise and worship. Uh, we have a presentation of the flag. We recite uh, the national anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we have our prayer presenters that come from all walks of life around us. And, including um, me. Including you, that's <laughs> yes, right. And, and uh, we're so happy <laughs> to have you. And, you know, uh, we're just... We're just normal folk, you know, there are no, other than you, there are oh, no, no big names there, you know, we're all just, we're all just men and women who have a heart for God to move in these areas of our lives. Uh, Monroeville Community Park is off of Tilbrook Road in Monroeville, yeah. and it's at Pavilion Number 4. Uh, it's the same pavilion we're at all the time, and we, of course, invite everyone to come and join. I've been there before, and it's a great time, a great time of intercession, a great time of rejoicing before the Lord with brothers and sisters. What do you, what, what really do we want to see God do? What do we want to see God do maybe in Monroeville and the Pittsburgh area and nationally? Well, I, I think the, the blanket answer is everything. We want to see God do everything. We want to see him rescue families from divorce. We want to see him bring families back into unity. We want to see our churches grow uh, so that the good news of Christ can go out so that not one would perish. We want to see our government uh, led by, by men and women who allow God to influence their decisions. We want to see uh, our businesses flourish as godly businesses that practice integrity and 
and fairness. And, and yes, as businesses make a profit as well. Uh, we believe that these things are important to God as well. He speaks to them all in his word. Yeah, it's not just about what happens inside the church, is it? It's, it is it's not. It's all of society. God has something to say to every direction of society. Jim, thank you so much for letting us know. Uh, it is again, it is on Thursday at 6. And Begins at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock at Monroeville uh, Community Park. So be sure to be there and pray and see God move in our nation. Uh, Jim, again, thank you so much for doing this and thank you for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate the time. Well, you're welcome. We're good to have you here. Well, we'll be right back with some ministry for you right after this. What you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope happens here. Well, we're just so thankful that you have spent this time with us here on Hope Today. We always pray that God really does infuse your heart with hope, help, and healing through the conversations that we have here. So we started off talking about sex and sexual wholeness. We are finishing the show with a conversation about the National Day of Prayer. And as he said, we are praying for mighty moves of God in our family, in our lives, in our world. And so we just want to remind you too that if you need prayer and you want to connect with somebody today, our prayer line is always available 24-7 at 888-665. 4483. We have the very best, loving, caring, spirit filled, uh, filled right. prayer partners that are ready and waiting for you. And so we just ask that today you get into God's presence because in His presence is healing and fullness of joy. And He loves you and He has such great plans for your life. Thank you so much for joining us today on Hope Today. Have a blessed and wonderful day. On tomorrow's Hope Today, learn the secret to shaping the world and impacting generations. International minister and revivalist, Dr. Jennifer A. Miskoff encourages you to pursue Jesus with total abandonment as you begin to experience his love and power wherever you go. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.